Hello and happy Saturday. It's time to take Brio out. Sit. That's a good boy. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, let's go to potty. Come on. Come. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. This is the back room of our house. I don't know if you've seen this yet. <laughs> but this is where the sliding door is to take him out. Rio. Sit. I keep this old jacket here so that I can take him outside. Sit. Good boy. You're so funny. Sit. Sit. You're so funny. Come on. It is 12.30 and it's time for Brio to eat. I'm home by myself. Daniel went out with one of his friends and it's very rare that I'm home by myself because we're both, like, we both work from home and so <laughs> we just both spend a lot of time at home. So I'm happy to have this one-on-one -on -one time with Brio, but he's very hungry and it's time for him to eat. He also just had his vaccines yesterday but his energy level seems to be the same. Yesterday he was a little bit tired and you can tell like his shoulder is a little bit sore if you touch it in the wrong spot. I know you're hungry. You're hungry. Let's, let's eat. I'm just very happy to be having a chill weekend and so that's what this vlog will be. <laughs> Don't have high expectations because I want to chill. Also, I've been blowing out my hair and doing a blowout on myself at home and this is day three it lasts and my hair doesn't get oily it's the best thing i've ever discovered okay time to eat <laughs> sit good yes lie down lie down yes let's do a little bit of training sit from his vaccine, but let's see if he'll do it. Lie down. Roll over. Roll over. Roll over. No, he won't do it. <laughs> Sit. Good boy. You're my sweetie pie. Good boy. We use his kibble for training. We don't really give him treats yet. Sit. Sit. 
We have to work on that because he gets so excited that he like jumps. Touch. Good boy. See, that's too much. We'll do some more in a little bit, but I'm just gonna feed him in his bowl. This morning he ate his breakfast in this puzzle. So I'm not gonna do that again. I'm just gonna feed it to him in his bowl. But I'll link to that puzzle on Amazon. Nikki got it for him and he likes it. Otherwise, he's still eating three times a day, so a third of a cup or a heaping third, but I just did a third now because I'm gonna give him some more while we're training. Wait. Good boy. <laughs> but I'm gonna go feed him. Come on. Inside. Sit. Leave it. Leave it. Good boy. Update, we also changed out his playpen. Um, we used to have a gray one, the same one from Play Yard, I believe is the brand. I'll link it down below. But we actually found this one on Facebook Marketplace and it has a gate. And I really, really like the gate because he's growing so fast and I know that it'll be hard for me to pick him up and carry him over the side. So I like that we could just open the door and he can walk out of the playpen himself. And it worked out just in general. We were looking for um, these gates, like they're modular so you can hook them all together um, because eventually we're gonna need to expand it and make it bigger because he's growing so quickly. Okay, let's do some playtime. Sit, sit, wait. Good boy, good boy. We're working on that because he jumps like crazy to be let out whenever we're standing here. Otherwise, he has really positive association with his playpen, he likes it. But if he sees me, he wants to get out. We're also trying to play on the carpet so that he gets used to it and he doesn't think that it's outside because knock on wood, he's been really good with potty training. <laughs> growing about a pound a week because we've been weighing him at home too. He was just over six pounds when we brought him home and he's been home for just under, just under four weeks. So yeah, about a pound a week. And I'm really nervous that he's gonna be bigger than we think. We met both of his parents when we picked him up and they were, like 15, 18 pounds, and that's what the breeder told us to be, but like you never know with a mixed breed. I guess with any breed, because of their lineage, like of their parents' parents and stuff. Come! <laughs> Just took him out again, washed my hands. He's in his playpen. We played, he went outside, he's playing in the snow. Now it's time for me to eat, cause I'm starving. I didn't eat breakfast, so I'm having, I'm gonna make brunch. Um, I also have to clean up the kitchen. I was having a really relaxing moment and I cherished every moment of it. Uh, before Daniel left, we finished watching the episode of Ginny and Georgia that I fell asleep <laughs> watching last night. So we had to like watch the rest of the episode. And then we have two more episodes until it's over. I had watched season one, I guess last year when it came out, 
but season two came out and Daniel had never watched it and I really really like the show like it's so captivating and I never really get into shows that often but we watched Emily in Paris and then we were like okay what do we watch next Emily in Paris is very lighthearted. Ginny and Georgia is not, but it's very captivating, captivating, and I really enjoyed it. And so we have two more episodes. Watch. We rewatched the first season together, and I'm really glad that I rewatched it because there's so much more that you put together when you watch it for a second time. And oh, it was so good. So yeah, two more episodes. Probably gonna watch those tonight. It's been like our guilty pleasure because the episodes are an hour. We've been watching pretty much one every night, and it's been like my release because this week at work was really stressful. It it's been. I've been able to balance work more because last year, thank you, thank you. Oh, bless me. Work really consumed my world last year and I'm trying to implement more balance. And I think I'm doing a good job of that, except this week was really stressful, but I'm still making more time for me. So that's good. I think this show has been helpful because it's been like something I look forward to outside of work. Anyways, we got these beautiful avocados from Costco. They're expensive, but they're amazing. So I think I'm gonna make avocado toast and a sunny side up egg and a side of fruit because it's brunch and I need a full meal. Oh no, my yolk broke. It's my favorite part. I always put a lid over my egg because the top never cooks. We have to watch it. Just turn down the heat. Since moving to this house, I've never worked with a gas stove before, so I've really gotten used to it. Yep, that looks done to me. Something I've been doing with my avocado is when I cut it, I'm only gonna use half because these are huge. I will slice it into little squares. This is a perfectly ripe avocado, by the way. I should put them in the fridge so they don't over ripen. Then I will put my seasoning on the avocado while it's in the shell still. Put a drop of olive oil. Ooh, too much. And a sprinkle of garlic salt. Oh, too much. toasty. I'm out of my rhythm because I'm vlogging. Ruined my egg, ruined my bread. Anyway, so then I scoop it out and then when I mash it on the bread, the seasoning gets mixed as I mash it. I don't know, little life hack that I learned and I really like it. That way I'm not dirtying the plate by mashing it on the plate first. I don't know. I just like it better this way. Couple cherry tomatoes. My egg goes right here. Classic. <laughs> what I like to do is eat it like an open face sandwich. Cheers. Mmm, perfect. I don't think I over toasted the bread. I like it when it's crunchy. I'm also just so happy that it's sunny. You can tell in the vlog, it's just sunny today. It's been really depressing. Like, I've been feeling a bit of like seasonal depression, and work has been like a struggle to like motivate myself this week like i said it was busy so i was a little bit more into it but the week before with work oh my god it was so much of a struggle to get into a rhythm and i'm just in so much of a better mood when it's sunny this weekend i've committed to not doing anything <laughs> like no plans because we've been so busy with plans like we always have plans and i'm tired of it this week we hosted daniel's family and his aunts and uncles to come see the house for the first time and to visit with brio and like I love hosting, I love seeing family, but I'm also a little bit tired of it. <laughs> Last weekend, I hosted my friends. Alyssa was in town and her boyfriend, and so we hosted dinner here, but we made dinner together. Oh, it was so fun. I posted a video on, or I'll post it today, <laughs> a video of us. Nikki put together a reel of our night, and so I'm gonna post it. Thank you, Nikki. She's my content queen. <laughs> She's like, you need to post more. I'm gonna make you this reel and you better post it. So I'm gonna post it. We made pasta from scratch because for Christmas, I got the attachment for 
our KitchenAid. Well, Daniel and I got it to make pasta. And so it's all I've ever wanted to do <laughs> is make pasta. We've used it twice, New Year's Eve and then last weekend with my friends. Last weekend with my friends, we made agnolotti. It was so much fun. And it's a fun idea to do with your friends because we like made it all together. And surprisingly, it didn't feel like there was too many cooks in a kitchen, even though we had six people. Finishing off with fruit because I have a sweet tooth and I love fruit. So I meal prep these and I keep them in the fridge. <clears throat> so it's really easy. And I'm on a pomegranate kick. So I also like to add pomegranates to it. And it's the perfect little crunch. I just put some laundry in, took Brio out again, played with him. Now I'm gonna do a speed clean of the kitchen because it really, really needs it. Daniel just let me know that he's on his way back and then um, him and his friend Paulo, who's like his brother, Daniel's an only child. They're on their way back and they wanna go, I don't really know where they wanna go. They wanna go to this place that sells like kitchen stuff and they want me to come with them. And plus I thought, let me get out of the house. <laughs> Even though I said I wasn't doing anything, I just thought I'd make a Kong for Brio. Daniel usually makes them, it's his thing, but I put some plain Greek yogurt and then I'm gonna put a little bit of baby food using the other side of the spoon so that I don't cross contaminate the containers but I don't have to get another utensil. Put a little bit of kibble and then it goes in the freezer. And he absolutely loves this thing. It'll keep him busy for like 20 minutes. <laughs> so I think you're supposed to freeze it on its side like this. We have a little bowl in the freezer that we put it in. Another thing that I do that's a little bit extra is whenever we put wine glasses in the dishwasher they always come out with a smudge on the rim and it looks like it's like lipstick marks but it's not it's when the glass is tilted in the dishwasher like this the water sits here and then dries so it leaves i don't think i'm showing it properly there we go you can kind of see it it leaves like a smudge mark that literally looks like lips so i don't want to ever serve a glass to a guest that looks like it has lipstick marks on it so i take some white vinegar on a paper towel and i clean the rim of the glasses before i put them away i know this sounds really extra but it makes me feel better that we'll never serve a glass like this and then they come out perfect this is a trick that my grandmother taught me my nana she works at a banquet hall. She still does. She's like 77 years old, 78. I think she just turned 78. She still works in the kitchen at a banquet hall, um, but she's worked in that industry her whole life. She does this to her dishes at home, like her, especially, so like glasses like this, but especially silverware to make sure that you never have any like spots on them when you serve them to guests. And it's something that I have actually picked up on too. Sometimes I'll do that depending on who's coming over, but look how clean they are now. I don't know. Maybe this makes me look crazy or maybe this is a helpful tip <laughs> to each their own. I don't know. <laughs> Mr. Mischief. 
I put this on him to try it on and he's completely hating it. Okay, okay. There you go. Start with sweaters. Yeah, but we don't have a sweater that fits him right now. The Christmas sweater. I think that's already too small. Okay, we tried a new technique. <laughs> you just gotta give him kibble and reward him the whole time. You're so cute. Show everyone. Sit. Wait. Oh, you're such a cutie. Real. Wait. I'm back in the kitchen and today we decided to make soup. So I'm currently making a lentil soup. So I have my onions and carrots chopped up here that I'm just putting in the pan. Oh no. In the pot. I think this pot might be too small for what I'm making. We shall see. And Daniel made a leek potatoes, potato leek soup. And it was really good, we already had some. And now we put it in jars. And we dropped some off at his parents' house. We just got back from there. We took Brio with us on a little adventure. And I have some celery from the garden that we had in the backyard over the summer. I had cut the celery in the summer and freezed it because it was a little bit bitter to just eat it raw. So I was like, okay, my, it'll probably be good in a soup. So now I have a lot of celery. I feel like I needed a bigger pot. <laughs> I added in potato and then I'm just adding water. I started to pour in the water, but then I realized we have a pot filler. So I'm gonna use this to make Daniel happy. Because I never use it. Now I have to add in the lentils. is done. I'm gonna try something that Daniel's mom does with her lentil soup, and that is to blend it. But I don't wanna blend all of it. I wanna keep some of the vegetables in the chunks. So I'm gonna separate it out, and then I'm gonna blend it in the pot. Oh, this is hot. All right, let's try this. I've also never used the immersion blender before. So let's see how this works. Try low. to try it. Well, I tried a little bit before, but not since I blended it. Really good. Mm. I'll put a little bit of chili flakes in it. I can't taste it too much, but there's a little faint kick, which you have to be careful about <laughs> putting spice in soup because the temperature of the soup like amplifies the spiciness. Mm. I'm happy. I like blending it. Cause I just think it adds a good texture. 